Our next film is Days of Thunder, the new Tom Cruise movie, with him portraying a cocky young amateur race car driver who wants to make it in the bigger world of championship stock car racing. As the film opens, Cruise auditions for businessman Randy Quaid and veteran crew chief Robert Duvall, who are trying to build a new team. Tim tells me you've been running open wheels. That's right. And now you just want to up and drive NASCAR. That's right. What do you know about stock car racing? Well, watch on television, of course. You've seen it on television? ESPN. The coverage is excellent. You'd be surprised at how much you can pick up. The movie is mostly about the conflict between the rookie crews and the veteran Duval, between the rookie's aggressiveness and the old pro's restraint. I realize Harry's been around a long time. I'm not saying that his ways are antiquated, but it helped have a car that handled properly and didn't blow engines. Well, if he wouldn't get excited and over-rev, the engine wouldn't blow. Now, Cole, when you shift the gear and that little needle on the tack goes into the red and reads 9,000 RPM, that's bad. Duval steals the film as the crew chief, coddling and pushing his driver as he sees necessary. Pace car's about ready to duck on off. If you go to the outside, you can hold it. All right, Harry, when it comes to that car, I take your word. Naturally, there is a love interest in the film. Nicole Kidman from the movie Dead Calm plays the young doctor who cares for Cruz after he suffers a concussion. You gotta be good at your job before you can enjoy the rest of your life. This is my job. That's all I know. You know, I can't watch you do this. I'm more afraid of being nothing than I am of being hurt. That's a good line, and there are many in this picture written by Robert Town, the superb Hollywood screenwriter who makes the character of that doctor a whole lot tougher than you might expect. In one speech, he actually tears apart the whole macho world of car racing. Cruz's character also has some interest because he's been written as a dull, secretly scared guy. Uh, it is very rare that moment when he confesses to Robert Duvall mm -hmm. that he doesn't know anything about, about cars. cars. <laughs> it, I mean, I sat there and said, this is great. Somebody dared to do this. I know how to drive them, but I don't know what any of the parts are called. <laughs> yeah, I could identify with that. And what this film also does well, I think, is give us a sense of the crazy leap of faith these drivers make, whether it's passing on the outside or driving through a smoke-filled track when there's been a crash in front of them. At some point, you just have to go straight ahead. Days of Thunder has a flat ending. It has actually a terrible ending in its last frame. It's a still frame ending with two yeah, people yeah. frozen in images. What a cliche. I, I, I just resented that. Yeah. However, the film works in bits and pieces more than an entire picture. Even with those reservations, however, I still recommend it. I recommend it, too. Um, I feel that auto racing is an extremely boring sport visually. It's because you have one three shot. possible shots. Yeah. One shot is a pack of cars all going at once. You right. don't know what's happening. Right. The other shot is two cars jockeying for position. Right. The third shot is a close-up of the a driver. driver. And that's all they have to show. In this movie, it seemed as if Cruz's car spent most of the movie being scraped against the wall by another car. Right. I have watched a little stock car racing on television. I don't think that they spend all of their time trying to drive each other into the walls, but they do in this film, right. and it's based on the strategy. Another thing that was a little bit predictable about this film is it has the same structure, the same structure as Top Gun, The Color of Money, and Cocktail. Uh, Cruz is always the natively talented kid who's undisciplined. Right. There's always the older mentor. 
there's always the taller, wiser, more mature woman who brings him uh, into her emotional sphere and helps him to grow up emotionally. There's always the first bad guy who later becomes his friend and the second bad guy who's the real bad guy. And then apart from that, there's always the piece of equipment, whether it's a cocktail shaker, a pool <laughs> cue, a jet airplane, or a car. These four movies could make a nice little matte set. Well, it's a very good analysis, I must admit. I hadn't thought it out yeah. that uh, carefully, but you're, abso I mean, you're absolutely right, mm -hmm. as you say. It doesn't make them bad. No. Uh, I, uh, the things that surprised me were the character of the doctor, who is strong, but this time uh, I thought stronger than even the, the air flight instructor in Top Gun in some way, mm -hmm. and maybe because it's something medicine or somehow I could relate to it more. And then the devout performance. He, yeah, well, that was, that's exceedingly well done. You would think it's just another good old boy. I was watching him, even in, when he's moving in the foreground of the frame, when the camera's on cruise and you just see his shadow of his face, he's acting and oh, doing... He's a wonderful actor. He's wonderful in this movie. And don't forget Randy Quaid, who's also yes, very convincing does. in that yes, role. Yes, he does. Now, Cruise does a good job, but having seen him uh, in Born on the Fourth of July and seen him in, in that movie emerge as a very, very powerful actor, yeah. I wasn't that excited to see him doing the routine Tom Cruise role again. Well, it may be routine, except that there are lines, as I said, written by town mm -hmm. that make, the, make it stand out where he isn't doing just the big hero here. The, the, this guy is kind of dull, and, and I think he knows that he's dull, too, in some way. Limited.